Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome to another Sega Wall Lockdown Isolation Special Guides. It's been a while. It's been deliberate. Um, I've uploaded a couple of videos, some good VR response videos, but I have gave the lockdown specials a little bit of a break. And my main reason for that was one, I weren't feeling it guys. It's been tough mentally the last couple of weeks with this lockdown and <clears throat> with my videos I have to feel it I have to be ready to go and um, yeah that's me you know I, I, I've got to put my passion across and you know I've just been feeling rather lethargic and just downbeat and it's not like me but hey ho that's how it's been and another reason also is there's so much content out there during this lockdown and I just wanted to take a breather and just catch up with so many videos. So to all the guys um, with channels that watch me, um, you might have noticed that there's been some comments sort of days or and possibly weeks after you've uploaded your videos. Um, I've tried to comment on, on all of your videos. Um, there is a fair few I've watched and I've just given a thumbs up and a like, but there's so many videos. I've spent so much time catching up so that's another reason really there's so much fantastic content out there it really is and um yeah i wanted to play catch up on that streets of rage 4 wow that has just been consuming me i absolutely love that game a stonking stonking release couldn't ask for much more really to be quite honest with streets of rage 4 I've been loving every minute of it, guys. Um, fantastic game. And it seems that everyone's loving it, you know. It's just saturated everywhere, is Streets of Rage 4, you know. And so it deserves it, you know. This is a game, this is a genre to me that really is one of my favourite genres. Um, like most people that love the Sega and the Mega Drive, absolutely adore the um, Streets Rage series, and it was so vital for them to get it right, and I really believe they have, and um, yeah, I love the artwork, so, you know, that's what I've been doing, guys, also with my daughter, we've been um, doing a lot more creative stuff, loads of arts, crafts, and catching up on films, I've been watching loads of family films with my, um, with my daughter, and just things like that, really, guys, so I gave these are rest for a little while and um, but I'm buzzing again I'm ready to go I've been playing loads guys I really have and um, we're gonna switch it about we're sticking with the Dreamcast oh yes we're staying with Dreamcast um, but we're gonna go American Japanese I haven't keeping this a complete Japanese exclusive or American exclusive I've taken a few titles out of each but before we go there guys before we go down that path, we've got to start where we always start, and that is free shout-outs. And we've got three newish YouTubers to shout out. Um, and then first up, we've got Half Hour Gamers. Two gamers. Too many games? Only half an hour? It's Half Hour Gamers! Yeah, that were a bad idea. Duo act and due to the lockdown, unfortunately, these two haven't been able to meet. Really good friends. Absolutely, really enjoy their banter and their chat. Predominantly pickups, and then they'll have a half an hour game. Really enjoyed the channel so far and it started off really well guys so go and check out half hour games he is posting up um, some videos on his own just to keep the channel ticking over so go and give him some support guys half hour gamers and then next up we've got another really new youtuber really been enjoying his waffle he likes to talk a loads of nostalgia not just on retro games but retro in general he seems a guy that's very um, on par with me and my tastes when it comes to 80s horror and things like that. He loves his VHS 
And this is Mike's shed. It's another Mike's shed. Um, very warm today, very warm in this shed. But nonetheless, the show must go on. The animator. <clears throat> Again, this guy's called William Anderson. I think top of my was Scottish. The pub sign in the movie. And that is the slaughtered lamb. That is American Werewolf in London. Is it David's head on the top? He films everything from his shed. And I thoroughly enjoyed his content. He seems a really level-headed guy and he talks really fondly and loads of nostalgia and that's me hooked when people talk memories nostalgia and their passion for retro things like gaming films you know i'm in i'm in on that totally 100 percent so go and check out mike's shed and then finally a youtuber that went quiet for a few weeks but he's back boom with a boom and that is no other than Retro Games Revive. Now everyone and hope you enjoyed that little bit of an intro I have been manically busy in my lockup this weekend this guy Sean um, <laughs> I really enjoy his content I love how he's got his collection in a storage unit and how he's got it all set up and he's been doing vlogs on that and he also does his pickups um, also he's just started a new um, series which is going to run for a year and it's um, on his arcade cab with a Pandora um, cart in it and he's just going to go through loads of games each week so go and check out Retro Games Revived as well so there's three more great channels for you guys and um, yeah there's plenty out there there is so much out there I just the amount of hours I've watched on YouTube is mental Forget TV, you know, who needs TV when we've got YouTube, guys? And just being able to share people's memories, pickups and the like. Talking of pickups, guys, I'm just waiting on a couple more pieces. But yes, I'm going to have a pickups video. That has been just so, so long. Oh, I can't remember the last pickups video and I've got some really nice bits. We've got some Mega Drive, definitely. And um, yeah, some really interesting bits. So keep your eyes peeled for a pickups and channel update video real soon guys anyway i'm drifting as i always do <laughs> and these are going to be in no particular order but these are some really fantastic dreamcast titles that never got released uk power and it's just such a shame and um, as we go through them there'll be reasons why they didn't make it maybe but you know these are in no particular order and a game i can remember seeing in the magazines and it was like that unfortunately with a lot of the Dreamcast games is you would see these games in the magazines and be so looking forward to them and unfortunately for one reason or another they just never ever surfaced and the first game I want to talk about is Cosmic Smash. Now back in the early 2000s when eBay started getting extremely popular and a lot it spread a lot further and I managed to pick up Cosmic Smash. It was a game that always intrigued me. You know, the, the Dreamcast has stayed with me throughout, you know, since launch. And, you know, I was really eager um, when the console died here to track down some of the um, import games. And this was one of them, Cosmic Smash. It kind of plays like a futuristic um, game of squash, really. It's kind of got the emphasis on block out where you have to hit and, and get points by hitting the certain blocks, but the ball bounces back and it's got a very res feel about it graphically. And, and that, I'm not sure if it's done by the same um, developers. I think it might be. Correct me in comments if I'm wrong, guys, but Cosmic Smash is a tremendous game and I weren't disappointed. When I saw this, it blew me away. It really did. A great game, so addictive as well. Um, yeah, a really quality game, guys. 
on the Dreamcast. And then next up, this game is going to be, you know, all of you, I'm sure, are shouting that this is going to be here, and, it, and I'm not going to disappoint you guys. And that's Treasure's Epic Ikaruga. When I first played this, this is one of the only games I actually imported for the Dreamcast way back when. And um, I weren't disappointed. To find out, I can remember I imported this, and not long after it got a GameCube release. And I can remember my mates really taking the piss out of me because I paid an absolute, well at the time it was a lot of money for this game. And you know, it was released in game not that much longer, you know, after the Dreamcast launch on the GameCube. And I had a GameCube, had one from launch as me and my mates did and you know, they all found it really funny that they had paid for this game a lot cheaper on the GameCube. But I always used to say to them, you've got to have a game that's developed and made for that console. And I stick to that, you know, this game plays absolutely superbly on the Dreamcast. And to, and to make me feel better at the time, and I think it's stuck with me, is I still think that Ikaruga on the Dreamcast is the version to have, and it only got a Japanese release. Um, likewise with Cosmic Smash, it didn't, it didn't see Light or Day in America or the UK. But these are two really must-have games on the Dreamcast. They're fantastic. And Ikaruga now, it's been released on everything. And I'm sure all of you shooter guys have played Ikaruga. Next up is another shooter. And this one was recommended to me quite a few years later. And it was when I first started to um, get to know Pete on a retro tip. Really wow. And um, it was in the really early days of Galaxy Sega. And I can remember him bleating on about this game. And that is Zero Gunner 2. Now we've got the spine card in here. And again, this is another game that absolutely blew my socks off. A tremendous game, it really is. You control a helicopter and you've got dual controls. A bit like a twin stick shooter. But obviously... The um, Dreamcast pad has any the one analog, so you use the buttons as well, and you sort of kind of can rotate and spin at the same time to direct your firepower. And it all sounds a bit awkward, and to begin with, it is a little fiddly, and it takes a few goes to get used to it, but when you do, my God, this really is a great game. I absolutely adore the visuals to this game. And it's got some really wacky end of level bosses and midway bosses too. But an absolutely corker this is. And it throws the sort of like angle as well. It can go kind of vertical. It goes all over. It really does. And it's got the little spine card there as well. And this goes for a pretty penny now on Dreamcast. I think I just about got it at the right time before the price really skyrocketed. But Zero Gunner 2 has been released on the Nintendo Switch, guys. And um, it's not the original source code. And um, the game had to be built from the ground up. And um, it's a little easier on the Switch than what it was on the Dreamcast. But nevertheless, a really good conversion on, on the Switch. And like I said, um, the developers had to build it from the ground up. But Zero Gunner 2, what a game. A must. So we've started with three absolutely stonking Japanese games. And they they never saw light of day outside of Japan. And next up we've got three American games. And I've chosen the American equivalents. Two of these I actually did have the Japanese release for. And again, we've got to go back to the magazines. And these games featured heavily in um, DC UK and the official Dreamcast magazines back in the day. And one that really sparked my interest is, I was never one for RPGs, but this one really interested me. And that is a game called Amada. Now, you can play multiplayer up to four players on this game. And it's like a RPG sort of top-down view of your ship. And, um, yeah, you take on squadrons and waves of villains. There's a story going and running as you're blasting. So it's got the shoot -em up elements there, but you can buy upgrades. You get to talk to different people, barter different weapons, and there's strategy to the game as well. 
So yeah, a proper shoot 'em up RPG. And my God, I was gutted. This was all set for a UK release. And then I can remember the magazine saying that this was getting delayed. And then there was talk of Armada 2. And then that got a UK release date. And then I'm sure I read somewhere that this wasn't coming to the Dreamcast in the UK, but the sequel was. And that the sequel was this game, but with, you know, all the little niggles and negatives of this one taken out and was going to be an absolutely awesome sequel. And again, that didn't surface. And the sequel didn't surface on the, um, the Dreamcast, unfortunately. I think it might have got a PlayStation 2 release under a different name, like Final Armada or something like that. I'm sure one of you guys that are into the PS2 will know, but Armada, what a game. At my shop, someone came in with a um, with an American Dreamcast, and I can remember it had all the run-of-mill sports games and all the filler that this game was there, and I can remember wanting the bundle just for this game. So this is one of the games I managed to bag when buying in a bundle from my shop all them years ago. And so it's it's got a lot of nostalgia, a lot of memories, this game. And it was a game at the crash of the Dreamcast when people were just in their droves, just cashing in and trading in their Dreamcasts to put towards a PlayStation 2 or an N64 or the like. And um, yeah... Amada, a great little shooter that. And um, I'm not sure if that got a Japanese release. I'm not sure on that one. But I've got the American release there. And next up, a game that I absolutely love this series. And, and when the magazines featured this one, I was just like, oh man, I, I really got to get it. And I can remember going out and buying a keyboard just to play this. And then I was absolutely gutted when it didn't come out. So again, I managed to get it Japanese. But recently... I've swapped that over for the American release. And that is The Typing of the Dead, an absolutely mad game. It shouldn't work. It really shouldn't. Literally, instead of shooting the zombies, um, a speech bubble will appear above them with a, with a word or name, and you have to type it as quick as you can before the zombie attacks you. Now, it sounds absurd, but it really works, guys, and it's such a wacky game. And... I can remember, oh, it's well, quite a while ago now, um, Holster, she was after this, and I sold her my Japanese copy because I managed to bag this really cheap, the American version. So really pleased to put that and have that in the collection. A great game, and again, gutted that it didn't get a UK power release. And then, yes, we've got six games, three from each, Japanese and American. And the final game, guys, is a game that to me, is one of the the greatest SNK 2D fighters. I love the Fatal Fury series, and this game is just absolutely gorgeous. And the animations in it are flawless. They really are. It just flows so well, this game. And that is Fatal Fury, Mark of the Wolves, again. Why didn't this game come out in the UK? I know we was kind of spoilt for choice for 2D fighters on the Dreamcast, Perhaps that's a reason why it didn't come over here. And it was released as a budget title in America. I can remember picking this up really cheap. Um, yeah, it was a really cheap release. And um, I would like to own the Japanese version of this as well one day. But yeah, I've got the American release of um, Fatal Fury, Mark of the Wolves. And yeah, it's a glorious 2D fighter, guys. It really is a great, great game. So there we go, guys. There is six games, three um, Japanese and three American games on the Dreamcast. Let me know in comments down below your favourite um, Japanese and American exclusive games. Um, I would love to know. I've got a fair few, guys, but there's still a lot I would like to add to the collection. Um, and as we always do, let's go over to the Dreamcast and let's play... So here we go guys, first up, we're going to play some Cosmic Smash guys. As you can see the Exploder disc there, unfortunately I don't have my Japanese Dreamcast anymore. I cashed in on that a few years ago, 
you have to do the old disc swap. Yeah, it's been a while since I've played this one. I say this a lot. <laughs> Brought to you by Sega. Still not mastering getting a decent picture of the BNO. Cosmic Smash. Right, Welcome I'm just going to go straight Cosmic into Smash. it just to show you a bit of this. Let's begin. So it's just basically light block out, just hitting these away. I can just remember visually being so impressed with this game. Oh! There we go. There's the first little boy. Phase complete. Next level. Cosmic bus. Seven one seven. Have a blast. Let's begin. Just simple controls. You can use the analog. And then you can do a power up move there by pressing the Y button. Your score is. Let's begin. An absolutely fantastic game. Have you guys played this one before? What do you think? A great little game. And yeah, just progressively as you go through the map. Next level, Cosmic Bus 737. Have a blast. It progressively gets harder. Let's begin. So this time we've got that wall to go around is just getting the right angle. Oh! Oh, it's getting tough, guys. Gotcha. And there we go, there's Cosmic Smash guys, what do you reckon? Let's quickly move on to the next game. I want to get that little um, Sony Bravia LCD display up um, and having a Dreamcast back through VGI. But unfortunately I won't be doing that until um, I've got the Sega wall how I want it. I'm still a bookshelf away guys to getting that done and then we can yeah then we can get on to doing a proper pad tour you know room tour really want to do that so here we go mark of the walls fatal fury let's get into it guys what is i want to know what's your favorite snk 2d fighter we're just going to go into story mode. There's a fair few characters to choose from. And I'm going to go Terry. Terry Bogart versus Kim J. Poon. Should have got the arcade stick ready for this one, really. But we're sticking with the pad. Come on, get to 
As most of these fighters, it starts off nice and easy. But look at that. The animation. The sprite detail in this game is, is tremendous. Oh. Got a bit of flickering going on here, guys. That's my scart lead. I was hoping that was going to hold out for this video. I thought I'd fixed it, but hopefully it's not too bad, guys. Round one. Fight. It's got a real chilled outness about it. This game. There we go, guys. There's um, Fat with Fury, Mark, the Wolves. What do we think? I'm trying to remember how to do the specials. Gets knocked out. <laughs> Just look at the animation in it, guys. It's probably not coming through very well. guys let me know in comments down below what do you think well guys as you can see this is a bit of a disaster i was going to show you zero gunner 2 i've been messing around for a while now and i think my scart cable is is gone um so annoying guys I, my run of bad luck with technology seems to be continuing and if i have a bit of a wiggle it does kind of come back, but yeah, something's wrong, guys. I'm absolutely gutted, but no fear. We'll be back with another Dreamcast video soon. I'm going to see if I can get myself another um, SCART cable. Next time, guys, I'm Sega Zombie. Goodbye.